Good morning, everybody. We're in Pillager, Minnesota. Diesel, how'd you sleep? Eh? Did you have a good sleep? Having Diesel with me this trip means much more housekeeping in the truck. But that's okay. We have a good little vacuum cleaner that's been feeling left out and neglected for the past few trips when I didn't have Diesel with me. Getting good use out of it now. really quite a shame all the litter we see at truck stops this one's not so bad but I mean you get all kinds of stuff Look at this back here whatever that is you got all this paper garbage here you got a tire here got a tarp here another tire over there I know that it's not the majority of truckers who leave their garbage out here. It's just a very select few. But uh, those few make such a big mess. <sighs> 11 years old, but he's still a puppy at heart. Diesel's had his breakfast. I've had got my coffee. I haven't had it yet, but I have. But I've got it in my possession. That's all that matters. Let's get going. We need to get this freight off my trailer. Let's roll.
Alright, so this is the process of taking the uh, tarps off the load. Got one tarp off. You pull it off, you find a nice calm area that's not too windy. Believe me, this is very difficult when uh, there's wind. That doesn't mean you can't get your job done, you still gotta get it done. So I'm gonna put you down over here. Show you how I fold this up. First of all, you can see that the flap at the front that goes over the front of the load, I flipped over on top of it there, right? the building take the straps off in there they'll unload me in 10 minutes and uh, I'll be off looks like I might be going to Fargo North Dakota for a reload find that out in a bit my work is done got all my equipment put away straps tarps everything are all put away I'm just waiting for them to take the last couple of lifts off my truck oh, they're doing it right now I have two more lifts on there and then they got to sign some paperwork We'll be off to the races. We're all set. Everything is signed, written in stone. I think I'm heading towards Fargo, but I'm not sure yet. GPS for now. Point my nose in that direction. Proceed to the highlighted route. cabin is right over there where the car just drove through that's the main road going through town here this is Emily Minnesota diesel we found ourselves a little pathway through to this little gravel road back here we're gonna go see where it where it heads to go explore town a little bit and uh, actually possibly get some exercise in Diesel, can you come here? You sneaky little guy. Sneaky little guy, come here. Hey, there you go, there you go. Come on, put it on. Now don't eat it. <laughs> Diesel, come here. Diesel, come on. Come here. I don't want it, I don't want it. Diesel, we're in a strange town. 
technically a foreign country. Okay, I don't want you getting lost here. Okay. And I don't want you getting hit by anything either. I don't know. Might be some ATVs or something come flying out of this trail here. I wonder where this trail goes. I wonder if it's private property or not. This is the US. If you don't know if it's private property, it's best just to not even go find out. <laughs> Now we're on the other side of that main highway. You'll see them driving through there in just a second. On the other side of town. There they go. Same road we were talking about before, we're just on the other side. We found this beautiful park here. Should have come this way first, eh, Diesel? And behind all these trees here, there's a beautiful lake down there, yet that I had no idea even existed. I'm gonna go check it out. I don't know if there's a public access point. I would assume so, because this lake is right there. This is a public park. These are all private cottages on the lake. You see that? There's gotta be like a, a public, either a beach or a, a boat dock something around here I mean, if we can just go to the edge of the bush here this part of the park hasn't been mowed I don't know if it's still a part of the park or not oh, yeah I think so because here you got these uh these horseshoe games. I wonder why this area of the park isn't mowed down like that area. And what if people want to come here and play some horseshoes? Oh, Diesel, I think this is the way down to the water. Go we'll check it out. Maybe I should have put my swim trunks on. I've got my Bose ear sets in so I can listen to some music quietly. They're actually very nice because they still uh, allow me to hear what's going on around me. But I can have some music playing that way. Uh, kind of if I want to. I mean, I haven't really been listening to music because when I go for a walk, I like hearing the sounds of nature anyway. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to take them out. Hold on, Diesel. Hold on. I'm going to take my headsets out. Of I didn't take their case with me. Oh, that's much nicer. Oh, that is much nicer. I could hear everything before, but this is like genuine nature sounds. Huh? Come on, bud. Diesel, come. Go check out the water. I have my trunks in my bag. Maybe I should have put them on. We want to go swimming. You can smell the water. Oh, it smells good. I wonder what that's for. That's where they used to hang the pirates. Pirates, ye be warned. The lake pirates. <laughs> I'm joking. For those of you, I, I don't know what this is for. It's probably not for hanging pirates, but you never know. Maybe. Diesel, hey, hey, don't go too far in there. I don't know what's in there, man. I don't know what's in there. Some old dock that's not being used. Look at that. That is Minnesota. Oh, man. Beautiful day out, too. It would be such a good day to be out on the water. Oh. Looks like there's a... Oh, we just had to go around a little bit. We came down the the grassy way. We could have gone down through there, I guess. That part's all mowed down. Is that public? I don't know if that's private or not. Like I was saying before, in the U.S., you want to be careful where you walk. If 
if it's a uh, private property you don't want to just go walking onto it it's a good way to get a bullet inside you not that that would happen most likely you just get yelled at and then you leave but if you don't leave and you refuse to listen to the property owner then you might get a bullet in you it's not like people just go out firing at random people it doesn't happen that's all just the news media hyping things up there's not one point in my life where I've been in the United States as a Canadian and have not felt safe. I always feel safe here. I know the news likes to make it sound like it's just this crazy, dangerous place. And I'm sure there are neighborhoods like that in the US. Chicago comes to mind, but I don't walk through those neighborhoods. <laughs> I walk through the countryside. And everyone I've ever met in the U.S. in the countryside have been good, kind, generous people. They just don't want you walking onto their property without their permission. Fair enough, right? I don't like that either. Man, I'm out of breath. This is why we're doing these walks. This is why we're doing these walks. Need to get that exercise. Oh, there's another dog over here. Diesel already spotted him. That dog over there is not on a leash. And I always get frustrated when dog owners sort of don't pay attention to these little rules. Because maybe your dog is very well behaved. And maybe it doesn't need to be on a leash in your mind. But because that dog was off the leash over there, Diesel goes nuts because he wants to be off leash then too. And he wants to go running. And, uh, you know, when two new dogs meet, you sort of have to supervise it just to make sure everything will go good. Diesel's never had any problems, but... And because that dog's off the leash over there, we had to walk way around over here on this side. Diesel doesn't always like every dog. He's never attacked a dog or anything, but he doesn't like every dog. Sometimes he bullies them a little bit. And that's why I have to be careful around him, with him when he first meets a new dog. I'm gonna make sure they, they drive, right? Well, when they have the rules that say, please keep your pet on a leash, it's not always for your pet, it's also for the other pets. I mean, Diesel starts misbehaving like crazy on, on his leash which is something we're working on but you know fair enough he sees another dog running loose playing fetch he wants to go run and chase him and play fetch too right well it's not fair to diesel that we're listening to the rules and they're not and he doesn't understand that so bugs me a little bit when i see people have their dogs off leash in public spaces especially at truck stops I sort of just cringe because, you know, one gopher runs runs across there and Diesel would be gone chasing the gopher. And if I don't have him on a leash, well, your dog might be well behaved, but he sees Diesel take off across the parking lot after a gopher. Chances are he's probably going to want to chase him because dogs do as other dogs do. They all run. And if that happens and you're not paying attention for that split second, dogs are just gone across the lot. And you know, these NASCAR drivers that come into the truck stops unannounced all times of day and night, 60 mile an hour through the pumps. It's just so risky. So I always just bugs me. I mean, he's got a pretty long lead. This is an eight meter lead, which is really long. Diesel, show him how long it is. Show him how long it is. Keep going. You're good. And it's a very loose spring in here too. So it's as if he was loose and he has, we're almost at the end here. He has all of that radius around me. Now, when we're by ourselves or in a dog park, sure, I'll let him off leash because he needs to, he needs to really run sometimes, but only if we're alone. As soon as I see another dog, I would leash him up because I don't know the other dog. 
I guess it all depends. Some people are okay with it, some people are definitely not okay with it. I'm sort of in the middle. Depends on the dog, right? And the owner. Depends a lot on the owner. I just try to be respectful of everybody. And this was the park we were in here. It needs a, a little bit of paint, but Emily City Park. And if you didn't know, there's a lake right over there, like I showed you. And there we are. Time to get back to trucking. We're going back to Kenora for another run. Another load of lumber, same thing. Pick it up in the morning. I'm gonna try to get that loaded like first thing in the morning and for lucky, we might get it unloaded tomorrow afternoon yet. You're looking good, Blue. You miss me? You miss me? Jeez, you think he missed us? He definitely missed us. We're back over on the Canadian side. Fort Francis, Ontario. Careful, bud. Don't don't jump out into the street there. Thought that guy was gonna jump right out into the street. I don't know what he's doing, just standing there. Made me a little nervous. I always lock my doors when I'm in town, just in case people jump up on the truck and try to open the door. It's happened before. It's not like it's common, but it's happened. Sometimes they want to try and sell you stuff. That actually happened in the US. It's never happened in Canada. But you never know. The fear would be that they want to rob you or something, right? You never want to leave your doors unlocked in traffic. People can just jump in, point a gun at you, and be like, what are you going to do? very confusing. The US side makes it a little bit more straightforward. But I think they're currently making it better because everything's under construction. And that's what kind of makes it confusing. Everything's under construction. Right around the border, right? Right around the port of entry. customer again we're gonna load up here first thing in the morning tomorrow and once again we're gonna try to get this done as quickly as possible 
there's one other driver that's parked here as well uh, from another company that's gonna want to get loaded first thing in the morning as well we'll see who's more on the ball first thing uh, that's whoever gets to the gate when they open I guess we'll see see what happens I believe we can get in at 7 or 730 I'll be ready to go in at 7 quickly run in there get loaded I'll have to tarp it again we're going back to Brainerd same run all over again and uh, if it's as easy as the last one to tarp there's a really good chance we can get it unloaded tomorrow afternoon yet but I'm not gonna hold my breath because things happen delays happen and uh, it'll probably end up being first thing the next morning but we'll see what happens thanks for hanging out with me today everybody and thanks for hanging out with diesel as well we've been having a good time putting everything onto the computer here right now and uh, we'll see you in the morning right diesel so tired.